Hello my lovelies and welcome back to Allotment of the Dead. So uh, really, really cold day again today. We've um, been out to a relatively new uh, garden centre for us, um, Russell Garden Centre near Coventry. Um, well worth a visit if you want to go and have a look. But uh, So we're coming up to February. So February is start of, really the start of spring. Um, it's the time when you can really start looking at exactly what seed you want to plant for the new season. Um, a lot of you guys, like me, will have already started with uh, some of your seeds. So you've probably already got most of your chilies in, most of your sweet peppers in. And probably you will have looked at things like aubergines as well. Also, now, all, all of these are Solanum species. All of them, we like really long growing seasons, a lot of them. So uh, again, it's one of those things to giving you that fighting chance to get some really decent fruit out at the end of it. So what have I got in store for myself in February um, other than my birthday? Um, I'm going to start really in earnest planting quite a few of the seeds that, uh, that I've got here. So um, towards kind of the middle to the end of um, February, I'll be starting my tomatoes. So this year, um, I'm not really planting many tomatoes. Uh, there's a few species, a few varieties, sorry, that I've got here. Um, all of them I've chosen really for their taste, the size, and kind of the ability to use them in different things. So uh, I'll show you what I've got in mind for next year. Okay, so the tomatoes that um, I've got here are uh, quite a few of them are from Bacon Creek Seeds again. Um, they've got a really, really good breeder over in the UK, in the uh, United States, that um, grow a lot of these really quite large, kind of stranger creatures. I call them creatures, but uh, they're all tomatoes. So some that I've had some quite um, quite a good deal of success with over the years. Um, the other thing with this year is as well is that I'm going to be growing everything outdoors pretty much. Um, as you can see, probably from my previous videos, the amount of chilies I've got and the amount of sweet peppers I've got, my polytunnels are probably almost entirely going to be chilies this year. So I've chosen quite a few of ones that I know I can grow outdoors. I've grown them outdoors before, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, sort a few of these and actually get them so they're actually giving us some really nice fruit off these. So what we've got here is Black Beauty. So again, it's a, this is a large um, black variety of uh, tomato. Really, really nice taste, really high in this... Uh, Anything that's really dark is full of uh, antioxidants, so really, really nice. I've got uh, a pink boar, which is a kind of a, a pink stripey almost variety. Again, these are kind of the normal size fruits, but the flavour is fantastic. Um, I've got a relative of that called large barred boar. So this is, a again, a variety that it, um, it's really high in flavour, and it's got these really lovely... Um, stripes down the tomatoes. Again, really, really good for um, for drying for sun dried tomatoes. And then I've got a couple of really large varieties of different colours. So we've got a, a Dr. Wicks yellow and we've got a, a green giant tomato. Again, these are nice, big, beefy mushroom, uh, beefy um, tomatoes that do really, really well in anything you use them in. Um, the green giant are fantastic in fried green tomatoes nice coating of uh, cornmeal um, and they do really really well um, the other large variety i've got is carbon so carbon is thought to be probably one of the sweetest tomatoes you can actually buy in terms of uh, for growing and uh, also for use as well again really really nice to flavor to this um, and then a couple of weird ones. I like weird. So Brad's Atomic Grape, again, we'll, we'll sow some more of these. Um, the colours and everything of these are fantastic. 
and then I've got something here called peach. So it's a garden peach variety. The weird thing about this variety of tomato is the fruit are furry. Really weird, but um, we'll give those a go as well. Um, there is a, another couple of um, varieties that I've ordered that um, I haven't actually got yet. And uh, they're Crimson Crush, um, Crimson Cocktail, and I've actually got another one called Burlesque. So all three of those are great for outdoor growing. And they're also really good in the fact that they are blight resistant. So blight is something that really affects these solanum plants quite heavily, especially towards the end of the season. Um, you can lose quite a few of your uh, plants very, very quickly in a short period of time. Okay, so as well as the uh, tomatoes, we're going to be planting some other solanum um, fruits. So we've got our tomatillos this year again. These will be potted up into pots. Um, again, a couple of varieties of tomatillo. Again, make fantastic jams, chutneys, that sort of thing. Okay, so as well as the tomatillos, we've got another couple of lesser known slantia species that we're going to be planting again. And uh, the first one is tamarillo. So tamarillo also called the tree tomato or the poor man's tomato um, again you can use the fruit the uh, skin and the flesh next to the skin is supposed to be really bitter so people generally will shy away from that but the rest of the uh, fruit you can use again for making really nice jams and preserves and goes really nice in a tart so we'll see what that one's like um, we've already planted some of the uh, narrow inhaler. Um, nothing showing as yet, so that was about two weeks ago. Um, we'll see where we are, hopefully, with those. I've got some more seeds if I need to plant some more. Again, some of these Solana species can be quite slow in germination, but that's not a problem. Okay, we also have this Solanum dulcamera. So this is one of the poisonous plants that we've got, um, also called bittersweet. Um, I think this one's also called woody nightshade. Um, again, the fruit of this is toxic. Pretty much every part of this plant, to a degree, is toxic. So we won't be doing anything in the way of eating this one. But the sea, the uh, um, berries on this, the birds quite enjoy them, so uh, they can help themselves to those. But again, we'll be making sure that this is in the pot so we can uh, actually keep control of it. One of the things that with this plant that can happen is the roots can actually break off quite readily, a little bit like the uh, mare's tail. So uh, with this one, we'll definitely be looking after it, making sure it doesn't go anywhere where it shouldn't go. Another one I'll be planting, especially with uh, some of the other things I'm due to be planting any time now, is this... Uh, Nicandra phyllosodes, so you can see from the uh, um, the actual flower there, you can see again, it's another Solana species. This one's also called shoe fly, um, so called because it's supposed to keep things like white fly and uh, other nasties away from your crops. So people generally will pot this up and put it in a, uh, a nice pot to keep away, to keep your brassicas and that clear of uh, white fly. Also called the flower of Peru, I think. I'll put it up on the screen if I'm wrong on that one, but I think it's the flower of Peru. Um, and then again, it's that time of year where we can start planting all of the uh, the poison plants as well. So the Chura and Brugmansia will be going in probably towards the end of February uh, in terms of seeds. Um, I've also got this uh, nice Aramaculatum. So this is the uh, Lords and Lords and Ladies. Um, it has these nice little red berries on it as well. This is one of those ones that will probably take an absolute age to actually start to, to germinate. So we'll give that one a go. And we have a hibiscus um, flower here, which is the roselle. So we'll start the roselle off again. We'll grow, we generally grow this as an annual in this country. 
because uh, it doesn't really overwinter. The first frost will generally kill this. But again, you can use the calyxes of the flowers for this to make some really nice jams. Um, as, so as well as those particular species, those particular types of uh, vegetable, we'll also be starting uh, kale. So I have multiple different types of kale. Um, I'm currently looking for some more of the emerald ice uh, kale seeds. I haven't got any more of those left from last year, so those will be something I'll be purchasing relatively soon. And we'll also probably start some of the other brassicas, like um, some of the kind of red cabbage, um, flower sprouts, and that sort of thing. Um, generally, if you start them early, you get some nice big plants. One thing I won't be doing with those is putting them on heat. So the kale and all of the brassicas, I'll be starting down the plot pretty much like I did the chard and the... Uh, and the onions so the onions are down there as well um, it's now the time of year to start your lettuces so again we've got lots of different red and white lettuces that we'll be planting and also some rocket as well so again those can go in again kind of mid february to the end of february we'll be, be doing those and then it's time to start uh beetroots so we've got some beetroots couple of things of beetroot there so I'm going to start some in um, in cells um, I'm going to use the three seeds per cell method and then they can be transplanted out into the garden once they've uh, grown a bit um, again sort of mid to the end of February and carrots so your carrots you can start some early carrots now again potentially you can potentially uh, use the um, the cell method these as well uh, these are better put directly in the ground things that grow under the ground generally don't like their roots being interrupted too much so uh, these would be something that we probably put straight in the ground again hopefully when the ground isn't too hard um, we can get those in again variety of different flavors and colors in those as well and then right at the end of february we'll start the cucumbers i know some people have started cucumbers already um, especially those people that want to try and grow cucumbers indoors. Um, every plant I've had of cucumbers has always gone absolutely mad. So I think um, if I was to start one of those indoors, it would probably very quickly take over pretty much the entire house. So I won't be planting any cucumbers indoors here. We'll start them off indoors. We'll take them down the plot when they're uh, big enough. But um, again, we're going to grow schlangen again, like I did last year. The, uh, it's a Chinese variety, nice long ones, and also uh, Telegraph. Uh, Telegraph will always do really, really well every year. As well as that, uh, I'll be doing the Sikkim cucumber, as I've done probably for the last five years, which is the brown kind of weird variety. Always enjoy growing them because they look really weird on the vine. So plenty to plant in February. Um, we're really into that nice growing season now where you can start really kind of planting things in earnest and uh, getting things ready for uh, going in the ground. Starting some of the things early will again enable you to clear a bit of space on your things like your propagators and things like that for uh, other things that are going to be coming along like your courgettes and your, your pumpkins and that sort of thing when they come in. So that's what I'm going to be doing in February. I've got a couple of weeks off in February as well so that's going to be really really good. It gives me plenty of time to get some of these things started. So that's all for now. Um, hopefully we'll uh, see you again soon on another video. So take care. Bye-bye.